This show is darkness and then light. It's all eclipse related. All eclipse related. That's our right. big eclipse tomorrow. So we'll be talking later in the show with our science correspondent, Dr. Alexa Halford from NASA. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. That's Isn't super that cool? cool. And we'll be talking with Shadow Flag, badass band from the UK. They play black metal. Whoa. Poetically. And the chaos that is Death Valley Girls. I know you love them. Yes. Huge fan. Indeed. And, but... Right now, we're going to bring in who I think is the Surgeon General regarding depression and anxiety issues. And we're going to close that treatment gap, aren't we? Yes. Regarding these issues and talk about the, what, what some people consider is the taboo. The word is suicide, and we're going to talk about it because it needs to be talked about. Yes. Along absolutely. with the word prevention. Except, yeah, that's so. exactly what it is. And that's what we are trying to do at Foundation 45 is breaking stigma that's one of our missions and um you know i think the more and more we promote and tell people that we have group sessions available the better we're able to do that absolutely and when you you know bring the subject up to people it's interesting how closed off some people get and they freak out about it they really they do. do they freak mm -hmm. out about the idea that you're telling them that um you know it's okay to say you're not okay yes. or that you've been in a place where you've made a suicide attempt um, and you found an option that was better than that. You found a way to deal with it. And uh, I think the more that we do that, the more people we can save. Because it's really about talking about the issue to make sure that people are aware that there are options out there and there's people who care. Right. And that's well said. Options out there and there's people who care and there's others who have walked this minefield and they've emerged on the other side. It's not easy. No. Is it? No, not and, at all. And, and what's the hardest part is, is, is getting them to... Admit to speak up to Admitting reach that out they to want you. Help, you know, and okay. that's a hard thing for anybody. Um, and them wanting to come to sessions, it's hard for them to put down their guard. And coming to a session that they've never been to, uh, that they don't know anybody, um, and especially just reaching out for help in general. Um, a lot yeah. of people just want to internalize that instead of actually saying, I need help. So we've got Lauren and Jennifer here. Thank you guys for being here from Foundation 45. It's a, you're a charitable organization, a nonprofit, yes. right? Yes. And and so you're not in it for the money. You're in it to help others. Absolutely. And so what? Okay. What is a typical day like? Are you are you guys both doing sessions? Are you are you both on the phones? I, I, I mean, what what is what is kind of the main thrust for a day at Foundation Forty Five? <laughs> well, all of it. So, so we're, all of it. Um, yeah, we're a volunteer-run nonprofit, and so all of us have uh, day jobs. Yeah. And so it's pretty much anytime you get a minute, um, or four or five hours at night when you really should be asleep, you're in there trying to figure out, um, you know, where can we hold another session? We have licensed professional counselors who will hold our support groups. Gotcha. Yep. Um, we also offer um, sponsoring for individual counseling for folks who don't have health insurance. Um, don't necessarily make a lot of cash. They couldn't just go pay out of pocket for someone. And so, um, you know, the other big part of that, since all of our services are free, is the fundraising component. Yes. Gotcha. Because the money that we take in goes right back into the organization. None yeah. of us get paid. Right. This is all just like volunteer. You said, volunteer. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, with, especially with our licensed counselors, they come in on days that, you know, they're not working. Uh, you know, we have group sessions on Sunday at 2 p.m. at Common Desk down in Deep Ellum and Mondays at 7 p.m. Uh, at Independent Bar and Kitchen. So those, and again, we're, we're trying to expand that. We're trying to do Wednesdays and Thursdays and do five to six 
you know, group sessions a week, just so there's, you know, maybe for one session we'll do substance abuse and the other one will focus on depression and then the other one it's, um, you know, PTSD or something along those lines. So each session we're trying to make sure that everybody, um, you know, if they have an issue with depression or anxiety or substance abuse, they have a place to go um, and know that where they're listening. So, um, and I think, you know, as we're growing as a group and with our, we're bringing on more licensed counselors, which is awesome because yeah. the more counselors we bring in, the more that we'll be able to do these groups. So when you go to the independent in Deep Ellum there, mm -hmm. you've got the private room in the back? Yes. Right. Okay. And that's every Monday? Every Monday. Yeah. And it just open to anyone or? or, or... 18 and up. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, do they have to kind of book an appointment through you nope. first or okay it's totally show up come as you are um you don't know how many are ever going to be there no mm -mm. Okay. Uh, and typically a group is somewhere between eight to twelve people um you know you'll have people come to group and choose not to say anything the first time just kind of yeah. want to like sit there check it out sure. see what it's about sure um you know and then you have folks who go to the same group on a regular basis and the cool thing about that is you start to create a support community from the other group members who show up a lot yeah. right they know your story they know who you are they're asking you questions um you find people who you can relate to in that group too which i think is really cool yeah um and it's really it's what's so different about our support groups besides where they're held um, is is that it's very much I like to call it punk rock counseling. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Come as you are. Our you know our counselors might curse at you during a session <laughs> if they think it's appropriate. Yeah. Um, you know it's it's totally real. It's totally honest. Um, and it, and it's a place to talk about things without it feeling too stuffy. You know. Gotcha. Yeah. We're gonna laugh about it. We're gonna you know you're gonna get some good advice. Mm -hmm. You know and some things to try. Um, but it's not gonna feel like this suit and tie. Yeah. Guy sitting there and psychoanalyzing you on a couch. That's not what we're about. Yeah. You, you bet. So I do want to touch on all these topics, and that, that is artists and 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 more in prevention. It's just kind of a perspective I have, and it may be wrong, but <laughs> I, my view is sometimes that the internet is broken. Mm -hmm. And rather than a free sharing of open ideas where we all come together, instead we've devolved into small little groups that oppose each other and separate from each other. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes that does lead to harsh, hateful language. Yep. And so is that a factor sometimes or, you know, is, 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 is this an issue you deal with that's just always been there and, and Internet has had no impact on it? Um, I would say as the more social media with Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, absolutely it's gone up. Oh, yeah. um, you know, especially when you talk with the, more of the teenage adolescents, the bullying, the social bullying, the depression through that. Even with ad adults, mm. um, you know, everybody hasn't, you know, you're trying to say um, how you're feeling and then you get people just trolling. And that yeah. makes you feel worse. I right. mean, you're, you're probably putting yourself out there. And then people are just, like you said, piling on. Yeah, it but gives you that filter, you yeah. know? That's the issue with social media is that I'm behind a screen and I don't have to say to your face what I'm saying. I can be the meanest, most hateful person and you might not even know who I actually am. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, I definitely have Facebook friends who I'm not sure I would necessarily recognize them if I saw them uh, walking down the street because that's just kind of the nature of social media. Um, on the flip side, it can be a positive thing, right? Um, a couple of weeks ago, we shared a post uh, from a supporter of Foundation 45 who was looking for a friend mm -hmm. who, who had uh, sent some messages that had them really concerned. They knew that he was suicidal. And so, you know, the goal was to find him because he'd basically gone off the radar. Yeah. Um, and they did. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, it, it, I think it, it can be a great tool. Yes. Um, but it's definitely, you know, something that you always have to kind of be aware of. People are willing to say anything yep. when it's anonymous. Exactly. Yeah, I got gotcha. you, and that can be hurtful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But can they? Can can people suffering from depression or anxiety reach out to you guys on social media privately, and safely? Yes. Okay. And then we're going to direct them to our counselors All to right. make sure that they, you know, they take care of them. They, you know, give them the advice that they need. And if they do need individual counseling, that's something that we will be more than happy to work out with them. Okay. And so sometimes your interaction with people may just be messaging, right? Um, uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, we try to we try to push people to our counselors as much as possible yeah. because. Okay. 
Lauren and I are not mental health professionals. Right. Um, you know, we, we definitely have a, a better grasp than a lot of people do. We're aware of the 24 hour resources, right? Yeah. So instead of calling 911, there's 741741, which is a 24 seven talk line um, where you can just text uh, a trained oh. professional yeah. and uh, awesome. they basically help you make a plan you know lots of times they'll they'll try to say okay well who could you have come over right they're, they're not going to ask for your insurance up front no it's no. a free service so yeah. if you were to text this number there's a licensed professional on the other end um that Let, will let's save the number again it's 741-741 i didn't even know that yeah. Cool. And it has helped because a lot of people, you know, they might be having a bad day or they don't want to get their name out or whatever. So these licensed professionals on the other end will talk to them and help them, like Jen said, develop a plan, um, help them maybe find a psychologist in their area or something just to give them support. Um, because that's, I mean, and this has been through Mental Health of America, I believe. Yeah, I believe so. Um, and they have done this for probably, I don't know how many years, but it's been going around for a while. So we have, we have stickers, our 45 stickers that actually have that text line. And we make sure that we give those out because again, if you don't want to come to session or, um, you're in a place where you can't, this is something, yeah. another tool for you. You bet. All right. You deal a lot with artists. Mm hmm and this is a unique group that put them share themselves with their art mm -hmm. whether it be painting or music or, or tattooing or murals or whatever mm -hmm. and sometimes they don't get support back sometimes they don't make any money sometimes they feel alone sometimes they wonder if what they're doing is meaningful mm -hmm. and and this is a kind of a a unique group that you sort of cater to mm -hmm. am i am i correct yeah absolutely musicians a lot and and such and we've had too many suicides just in the last few months i know yeah. uh, here right here mm -hmm. right here and and so i i don't know i'm not really framing a question i know but i guess is is there something else that that we should add right here directly as a message to musicians slash artists Know that you're not alone and know, especially with our groups, um, you know, check us out online, come to our group. We're welcoming We're, you know, we're leave your judgment at the door. Come and if you're having a shit day, tell us about it. Yeah. You know, that's what we're here for, especially when you're dealing with musicians or artists, they internalize everything, right? They use that as their form of art. So if they're a painter and how they're painting, that's their outlet. Well, sometimes you need more than that and you need a more support system to meet other artists that are struggling the same as you. Um, so, you know, that's a, our, another main mission that I think we have is you're not alone, you're loved, there is a place for you here. Um, and that's something we've been really pushing. Right. Um, and you don't have to be the tor tortured artist to be right. a, a good artist, right? To make meaningful art does not require for you to have some sort of uh, pain or angst. Um, you know, you're always going to have those feelings, right? Let's keep them in a, a manageable way where it's healthy for you as a person. Mm -hmm. uh, same with substance abuse, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of folks who feel like, you know, they don't, uh, they don't perform as well as a musician if, you know, they're not just like out of their minds. Mm -hmm. um, there's painters who, you know, like that's just, it's part of the process for them. Um, and you have to kind of ask yourself, is this healthy? Or am I, you know, jeopardizing my personal mental health because I feel like it's necessary? Um, and it's totally not. It's yeah. totally not necessary. So is a safe message for artists to maybe try to compartmentalize? In other words, if you're in a creative mood, make that a certain part of your day and then come back to, uh, you know, come back to, an, a, a, I don't know, some sense of normalcy. Mm -hmm. Am I am I yeah, on target no, there? No, you're absolutely right, and that's the thing. You know, always use your emotions as a fo as a form of your artwork or music or whatever. That's that's your gift. Um, but also know that there's healthy boundaries that you need within yourself um, to live a you know a healthy, happy life, um, and you deserve that. Um, so I think, you know, it's okay to use these different you know, artwork or songs or these things to kind of help work through some issues, but also know that if it's going, if you're going down a dangerous path, then there's other tools that can help with as far as coping me mechanisms and things of that okay. nature. And speaking of coping mechanisms, we're going to be talking shortly to this band Shadow Flag from mm -hmm. the UK. And he recently put out a message about a British um, uh, nonprofit organization uh, 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 that 
that helps people mm -hmm. with mental health issues. And all of us are there sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I went to that webpage for that group, a charitable organization. And I noticed that they had some activities planned. One was a bike ride mm -hmm. and another was, I forget, a, 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 going to a park or something like that. Mm -hmm. Is it short-sighted of me to say, hey, physical activity, yeah. a comedy club, uh, a funny movie, um, uh, you know, um, climbing a mountain, I don't know, some, something to where you get out of your environment and you go over here. Mm -hmm. Is, is that is that a long-term or a short-term or a no solution? Well, part of our group sessions, what we do is we do yoga afterwards. We do a comedy. Uh, we have a com comedian come in afterwards. So stuff like that is perfect. Cool. Go for a bike ride. Well, wait. At, 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 so at, at Independent? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then yoga. Hey, Ziggy. <laughs> our engineer is a comedian. We got a job for you. Yeah, we got something our for you. Our engineer is a comedian. Perfect. He's a comedian at Backdoor Comedy Club. That's awesome. Yeah. We're going to be reaching out, Ziggy. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I mean, that's very. I mean, it's it's weird how that how you brought that up, and that's a big part of what yeah, we do. Absolutely, and just uh, scientifically, being physical, getting some exercise um, is really good mm -hmm. for your brain. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, exercise releases the same kind of dopamines that make you feel good, right? That yeah. like uh, an yeah. antidepressant one. Um, but it's done in a natural way. Mm -hmm. And I, I personally, you know, really see a lot of value in getting out of your space, yeah. right? Good point. Like, you, when you start to get really depressed, it is so easy just to stay at home, stay in your little bubble, do the same things all the time. You know, maybe it's just house and, and jam space, right? Back and forth, back and forth. And that's it. That's it. Um, and that's not good. Right. I think it helps you kind of get a new perspective. Yeah. Like you said, like when you go out and you get outside of your bubble. Yeah. Um, just to just to see things differently visualize it we want everyone now to visualize it you extract yourself mm -hmm. and you move yourself and you plant yourself yep even if it's for two minutes right get out and walk around the block and i think a lot of that too is confidence it'll give you more confidence in yourself like wow i went out and i did a brand new yoga class i never thought i was going to do yoga but yeah. i did it wow yeah. yeah and then that again is is that whole rush and it's it's really going to open new doors um and that's why a big thing is after our sessions we want to make sure each one we're going to start bringing in art therapy afterwards or during our sessions just ways of outletting that we understand that you know the creative types do um that they need so i've always thought that in corporate america we should have the equivalent of a court jester you know <laughs> some sort of i don't know Corporate America, that's what I associate as depressing. Right. And and so, <laughs> you know, back in, uh, you know, when when kings ruled the world and, right. and ages ago, didn't they have court jesters who sure. would just try and cheer people yeah. up? You know, why yeah. don't we have that anymore? You and should. I used to work for companies that would bring in occasionally a massage therapist. Oh. But I thought, hey, if they're spending money on that, no, no, no. I'd rather have some sort of comedy person <laughs> and right. do some juggling or jokes or both. Yeah, exactly. So juggling and jokes at the same time. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I want to work yeah, at that there you company. Go. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's needed. See, right. we could start a company right now, maybe. I know. You know? I, it would be so successful because I'm sure everybody wants to do that. <laughs> so look, corporate America, don't yeah. spend money on a new Coke machine. That's worthless. <laughs> Help your employees by making them laugh. Right. I'm sure a few people that Jen and I know would take that job in a heartbeat. <laughs> Good. Yeah. <So>. yeah. <laughs> Done. It's sold. <laughs> okay, so look, our symbolism here is tomorrow is the eclipse. Yes, there is darkness. Mm -hmm. It's followed by light, yep. and we're and and that's our message here today. Yeah. I mean, we, man, we all get down in a hole. Yeah, way down sometimes mm -hmm. in that hole. Right, but there is light. But you've got to extend a hand. You yeah, got to absolutely. You got to reach up. You got to push your ladder up. Right, and then and then. And then ask for someone to grab you. And you're going to want to have to change. I mean, you can't change somebody that's not willing to do that. And that's why, you know, whether it's Foundation 45 or a Yoga Circle or whatever you decide to do, know that there are people that are willing to help, but you have to be open to it. And I think that's a big thing. A lot of people shut down and then they're like, no, I don't, I don't need help. I don't want help. Well, you're never going to be able to get to the next step um, if you're not willing to, like you said, lend a hand or reach out for help. 
Sure. Peter Thomas, who's the psychologist on our board, he kind of uh, manages all the counselors for us because he has the expertise, he has the know-how. And uh, we did this series of suicide myths. And the one that I think hit most people the hardest was this I the idea that if someone has completely 100% decided that they're going to complete suicide, there is nothing you can do to change that. Right. It has to be a personal choice. There has Now, for most people who are contemplating suicide, there is a part of them that does want help. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're scared to ask for it. They're not sure where to go. They don't, uh, don't know the resources, aren't sure who they can ask about the resources to. Um, you know, but, but they, they are desperate. Right. I mean, to be completely honest, for that help. And so that's a big part of what we try to do is to make sure that people are fully aware that there are resources out there 24-7. Yeah. There's a variety of different ways that you can get help. Um, you know, and there's groups like Foundation 45 and other organizations that are there to help you figure that out. Mm -hmm. And yep. a lot and of there, the time, there's, um, yeah, there's the website. That's our website. And again, we'll have, um, we have all of our videos up, um, for our breaking stigma where, um, there's actually, um, celebrities or famous yeah, Jim musicians. Suler, yeah, yeah. yeah. Made a statement. Yeah. They talk about their, their stories and yeah. where their struggles were, struggles were. Um, and just kind of to jump off of what Jen was saying, you know, when you're talking about suicide, a lot of the time they want to be free from their pain. It's not necessarily that they want to die. So it's like if we can get you to group and you can meet other people that have went through that, yeah. that's a big factor. And that's right. We'll get you free from your pain. Right. Right. Just on a different path. Exactly. And a healthy path. Mm -hmm. Let's. And speaking of, you know, laughing and activities and, and physical physical activity. This cool event you have coming up is next weekend, right? Yep. Yes. So it's a week from today? I guess. All right. So, and you're going to be all wet. Yep. Oh, I'm yeah. going to be all wet. Oh, yeah. Jennifer's <laughs> going to be all wet. Oh, yeah. Why are we going to be all wet? Because it's water balloon wars. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So there it is. There, right there. it is. There it is. 65,000 oh, water balloons. So yep. get ready. Hey, wait. There's dunk tanks? Yeah. There's, oh, oh, and here's the best part. So uh, Adam Medrano. Okay. Dallas Councilman has uh, put together himself and uh, some folks from the Dallas Police Department and the Dallas Fire Department, and those are going to be our dunk tank victims for the day. Yes. So, you know, <laughs> you got some pent-up aggression against the Dallas Public Service. Whoa! Folks, you know, <laughs> maybe. Oh. Yeah, you know, anyone who's willing to uh, donate their time and, and get dunked into a pool of water multiple times all day long, you can't you can't fault them for that. That's no. right. So much appreciation for them yeah. uh, helping us out with that. We've got the dunk tank we've got water slides there's little pop-up pools that we have yeah. and then there's battles so there's yeah. water balloon more battles yeah. Ooh. um there'll be four of them <laughs> yeah there's four of them so yeah. it's gonna be a great time uh Heck tickets yeah. are available online mm -hmm. so, all right so, so let's talk about tickets but i want to point out the location is behind uh trees in mm -hmm. that big yes. parking lot yep where it was in in 15 right yeah yes all right so same location and all right we have a message for everybody, and that is please buy your tickets online in advance. Yes. Yes. You've got to do that. Right. Otherwise, here's what's going to happen. Everyone seems to be waiting till the day of, and there will be a line a mile long, and then you won't get in. You'll be mad, or it'll be delayed to get in. Right. Yeah. We don't want that. No. That's going to suck real bad if you wait. You know, yeah. It's going to be hot. To, it's going to be hot. You're not going to be wet because yeah. you're going to be outside of the event, right? Yeah. So you want to go online, grab your ticket. It's going to get you in the door the fastest, and then that way you can have as much fun as possible. So let's be clear. There's a separate line for the uh, people who thought ahead and bought a ticket in advance, and they zip right in. Absolutely. And then there's this long-ass line here of people <laughs> right. here who are hot and sweaty and yeah. jealous of all those who are inside right? And because they're all wet. Uh -huh. And we don't want to be in that line. Right. And then, so, you know, if you have your tickets beforehand, you can hit the vendors before them. We're going to have Easy Slider, a bunch of other, you know, drinks. Yeah. So cool. don't miss out. Yep. All right. So what's the key? Where do they go to buy the ticket? So uh, there's a Facebook event. You can also go to DeepElmWaterWars.com. Water War. Deep Elm Water Wars. Wars. Mm -hmm. com. <laughs> and see, this is just perfect. I think that it itself will make anyone feel better mm -hmm. if they're maybe, I don't know, feeling a little, you know, crunky that day or right. something. You know, come to the water balloon wars and feel good. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, we did a promo video uh, a couple of weekends ago. <laughs> Yeah. Where we found random strangers in Deep Ellum to throw water balloon wars at Lauren and myself and the rest of the board. Oh. Um, and it was so much fun. It was. Like, it really, like okay. you know, the idea of getting hit in the face with a water balloon is actually way more enjoyable than you might think of it. I think uh, it's great couples therapy. Right? Yeah. That is not it. That is not a endorsed oh. message from Foundation 45, but me personally. <laughs> okay. So you're saying if if 
your your better half, and maybe you're I don't know, got a little bickering or something right. going on. You take it out in a fun way. Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> you never take out the trash. Yeah. <laughs> but I fed the dogs. <laughs> Whack. <laughs> You didn't do you it fast snore. <laughs> you snore. <laughs> so there's plenty of healthy ways of helping uh, yeah. getting it all out, get the angst out. with yeah. uh, And then dunk tanks, and we have slides. So there's there's going to be a lot to do. So let's be clear. What makes you feel better? Laughter. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yep. And even just laughing right now, I feel better inside. Good. I do. I know. <laughs> it, that, it helps. It, it there, I think there's like somebody actually did a um, like a scientific research on it and they were like the more people laugh like the more you're not stressed as much you're in a happier mood you're i mean that's just basic stuff when you're constantly sad and you're moping and you're doing that you're not gonna one, one more angle on that and i totally agree mm -hmm. when you're laughing really laughing with others okay it also breaks down any sort of barrier of you being honest mm -hmm. yeah. and you're really open right. and willing to admit that you did X, Y, or Z, or whatever, and in it, but you're because everyone's laughing. Right. That there's no there's no filter. It seems right. in in my experience of admitting right. maybe something really awful you did or you feel bad about or whatever. Right. Yeah. No, I think so you're it absolutely facilitates right. communication. Mm -hmm. so. I agree. My, my perspective. Yes. Laughter and music, I think, are yeah. like the yes. the two tools that we have as a society to bring people together, right? Everyone well, likes to laugh, and nearly everybody likes music. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Taste in music is, you know, that's a different thing, but... <laughs> can I offer another suggestion? And that is, in this very room, we've had many cool bands, mm -hmm. and we usually always talk about a circle pit and how therapeutic it is. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I think that that's a good point. And and there's even a a place that that Danny uh, Janie Slash our co-host you know has, has introduced me to called Mosh Fit. Oh really? Mosh Fit, yeah. That's awesome. It started in New York, and I, I don't know. I think they're trying to expand it. You're blowing where, your mind right now. Yeah. Where, <laughs> like one time you up. They get in that circle and they get going, and you know when you're pushing and shoving people you love uh -huh. and our friends, it's therapeutic. Wow. And it's physical. Yeah. And you feel relieved and you leave all of your negativity there. Right. In this really healthy kind of way, yeah. right? Like, In a healthy way. Yeah. Yeah. Of like course. a, a, a yeah. solid mosh pit, solid right? Mosh it's pit. about, uh, you know, pushing your friends down and then helping them back up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, That's you good. fall down, you don't even have to know who they are. But there is something super, it's a bonding moment, I think, between yeah. people. Like, even if you don't know them, like, there's something about like surviving a pit with yeah. other people that makes you just feel good. It's sort um, of a primal thing. Yeah, yeah. it's totally primal. It's like a well, in our country, yeah. Yeah, here. Yeah, yeah I had yeah. a friend who experienced one in Poland when she was a kid. Cool. So, what I'm told cool. is that there's life before seeing an eclipse and then there's life after in other words it changes you in a profound mm -hmm. way wow to understand our place in this universe and is that something that would help someone also who's maybe feeling down to understand that this is a big universe mm -hmm. we all have a place in it yes. and here is ours let's understand where we are mm -hmm. and, yeah I, yeah I know, yeah i thought. think so, so. I, th I definitely think so i think the more people have a purpose you know, a lot of the people that are, you know, super depressed or going through a really rough time, they may have lost their job or, you know, divorce or whatever the case may be. They don't feel a purpose anymore. So, like, to your point, it's bringing that back of finding your purpose, finding yourself. So, gotcha. yeah. So there's light after darkness. Mm -hmm. And so the sun will be blotted out, but then it comes right back. Yes. And let th let this be a, you know, a, 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 a this is our story. Yeah. This is our message right now. I think it's a great message, and I think of being a part of that, you know, with us being on Foundation 45, that's a huge, that's, I mean, I think that's Yeah, there's we do. always a light, Yeah, you know? Yeah. As dark as it gets, there's always that light around yes. the edge that's there, and you got to grasp it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's right. Good point. And when grasp you that do, ring. Yeah. yeah. And when you do, it, you know, it, it, it does change your mindset. You know, when you're able to pull yourself out of a deep depression or... Uh, bout of anxiety, you know, it, it builds a confidence mm -hmm. um, and it helps you be able to do it again. Yeah, to do it again. And You're again training and again. your muscles 
to yeah. do it again. That's right. Yeah. Your mental capacity, your mental muscles to do it again. Right. Mm -hmm. Cool. Hey, we're going to transition now. Okay. Here's All right. what we're going to do. We're going to put on a video okay. of this cool band, Shadow Flag. Awesome. And they're the ones I told you about. Yeah. And, you know, he's he's totally in tune to our message today. Yeah. And then we're going to talk, but right after that, we'll probably we'll bring on that band, um, Death Valley Girls. Mm -hmm. yeah. So would you stick around? Yeah, and absolutely. We'll, we'll talk to them and, and see how much fun they're having on tour. Yeah, so, thanks. Yeah. All right. Cool. Coming up soon, Dr. Alexa Halford. She's our uh, NASA science correspondent. That's awesome. Yeah, so, so cool. the course Show is a science correspondent. That is really cool. <laughs> I'm excited to talk to her. <laughs> hey, also, September 1st, I just want to remind everybody, uh, Deadly Sins Burlesque is going to be performing over at Gas Monkey Live. Yes. Oh, September nice. 1st. 
and they're uh, we're opening for Hell's a Poppin' uh, uh, Circus Sideshow Review. That is awesome. Yeah. So it's not a metal show. It is better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, all right. No, it's different. Yeah. It's, all right, that's gonna it's be all, a really it's good all circus sideshow acts and and burlesque. So I will be there. Oh, yeah, yeah I'll cool. Be there, yeah. yeah, good. That's awesome. Yeah, we're gonna have fun at, at uh, Gas Monkey Live. All right. So uh, you and I have bonded over this band, Death yeah. Valley Girls. I love them. Yeah, they're named after the hottest spot on earth, and I think they're trying to send us a message about global warning, warming, <laughs> yeah. which I totally get. Yeah. So, <laughs> but but this is a wild band yeah. that is chaotic. They refuse to be labeled. Mm -hmm. They kind of remind me of the Darts. They kind of remind me of uh, Bad Cop, Bad Cop. Yeah, they yeah. kind of remind me of just that that freeform punk. And yeah. they don't care what you think. They're going to have a wild, chaotic show. Yep. And they're here in Dallas on Thursday night. Oh, so awesome. Yeah, over at somewhere on Main Street. I forget the name of the club. But it's <laughs> <laughs> Thursday in Dallas. <laughs> so, Look it up. We'll be and there. then they're opening for freaking Rocky Erickson. That's insane. On another leg of their tour, and it seems like they've been touring every day this year. I yeah. don't know. They they like. work hard, and I never okay, had. So you heard... saw them in, in Austin. In Austin, <clears throat> I saw them about a year ago. I want to say it was um, in October, and I never really had heard of them. And all of a sudden, uh, they're like Death Valley Girls. You got to check them out. And I'm watching, and I'm like, Oh my god! Like yeah. they went nuts, and the energy with them. I mean, I was blown away by just the drummer because I'm a drummer myself. But just watching all of them. Like you said, they're chaos. They don't care. Do you not label them? They're there to have a great time. Yeah, yeah the front woman in me was a little jelly. <laughs> I'll be honest. She does. I got to work on my moves, man. <laughs> that sounds therapeutic. Yeah. When you see chaos on stage yeah. and, and you're going crazy, how can a smile not go over your face? Right. <clears throat> because I, I love it when a band embraces the word pandemonium. Mm -hmm. And that seems to me how I would describe that. Yeah. And I haven't even seen them yet. Yeah. They they put on a, a fantastic show. I was upset yeah. when they were done. I was like, oh, man. I, they, I mean, it seemed like 45 minutes just flew by. And I met, this, or I met the singer afterwards when I was at their merch booth. And she was just, like, hugging and so appreciative and just awesome. So I'm stoked that they're coming to Dallas because yeah. I will be there on Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that very cool. cool? Very cool. Thursday. So, but this will be, we'll, we'll go to the show after filling up balloons. Right. That, that's right. Thursday that's night. Too. That's so you're right. looking for volunteers to fill up water balloons? Yes. Uh, on Thursday night? Thursday and okay. uh, Friday. We're going to be making a post and it's going to have all the addresses and places where you can go. Um, Thursday, it'll be from like 630 to 9 and same thing for Friday. And just come. It's going to be a blast. Come in a bathing suit because you're going to get wet. Yep. Um, and we're planning on hopefully getting 30,000 water balloons filled before the actual Each event. Each day? Um, so, hopefully. Oh, okay. That's the plan. But so, again. So, okay. So if things go well, maybe 60,000. Yeah. Blue, yeah. Maybe right. even more. Yeah. Who knows? But so. <laughs> I'm just gonna fill them all. But we have no expectations right now. We're just gonna try and knock them out. So, so I I remember last time there's there's some balloons mm -hmm. where they just hit you and bounce off. <laughs> that happened to me. And then you me. throw them again and they, they never break. No, <laughs> they like never break. It's like a brick. <laughs> So, can you please get the balloon kinds that like burst when they hit human flesh? <laughs> I'll make sure that happened when we were doing the street and a uh, friend of 45. Yeah. Somebody like wailed uh, water and it hit me in the stomach. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> And I like had the breath of it, like I lost my breath and everything. And I was like, "Oh man, we're gonna make these things much easier." And those were not high quality no. water balloons. I like, no. you know, full disclosure, bought them at the dollar store kind of right. deal, you know, yeah. to use for no the worries. day. And so, yeah, so just prepare. <laughs> we we are having trouble making a connection with them, but we do have a couple of pictures, man. I'm hoping yeah. that maybe we can pull those up and and show them. But of the live show of um of Death Valley Girls, yeah. Death Valley Girls. That's awesome. Oh, there you go. Look at so, that. Yeah. yeah, and you got to do some crowd surfing. How oh, yeah. therapeutic is that? That's awesome. Okay, look here, and, and the Rocky Erickson's tour that starts uh, later. They're they're doing this short tour before Rocky Erickson. What a cool tour! Uh, yeah, so that's really isn't cool. That awesome. Yeah. So I think also at group therapy sessions, we should have a whole bunch of people just crowd surf you. Yeah. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> we could totally make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> Teach people techniques. Everybody. You know, how good would that make you feel? Yeah. 
Yes. That would be awesome. It does make you feel good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you feel so cool. I mean, let's just be honest. It makes you feel so cool. <laughs> they do that thing like to trust one another to fall. Right. Back. It's, the, it's oh. the punk rock version oh, they of the do? trust fall. Yeah. Have you heard about oh, the no, trust fall? I'm just saying oh. in general. Yeah. Like oh, okay. there's been like okay, that's a part of a trust bond where people yeah. just be like, fall into my arms. Well, you know, you got to make sure you know the people you trust or they'll right. just watch you fall and laugh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my theory is, and it's probably wrong. This is not based on any of the science that I've that I've gathered. Is that I don't know that there is more depression in the twenty twentieth twenty first century mm -hmm. than there was centuries ago, because we're less active now. That's true. I don't know. Just my thought. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot more a TV. So you know, that's just a guess. social media. Everybody, everything's technology, right? So you could do everything from your phone. You can order food. You don't have to go out. You can, you know, hermit like become a hermit. Yeah. And I think that's a when I start falling into those. I love Netflix binging, but I got to snap out of that because I'm like, no, because I feel like crap the next day. I'm like, I sat and sat there for six hours watching Netflix. What have I done you, with my you life? Feel, you right. feel. You feel bad. Yeah. Yeah. Just, kind of. you know, mentally and physically because you're not moving and yeah. you're just sitting there. And yeah. I mean, some days you need that, but when it becomes a habit, you got to snap yourself out of that. Because... Yeah, there was a really cool uh, NPR story the other day that I'm a nerd. I love NPR. Me so, too. Uh, yeah. All the time. And uh, they were talking about how the rates of depression and unhappiness coincided with smartphones right and so what did smartphones bring people it brought social media into your pocket right yeah. and it made it an everyday all-day kind of occurrence where you can kind of you know you're you're subjected to this uh superficial level of social interaction yes that you get on social media and so i thought that was really interesting you know and it, i think people are more aware that's one thing that's also different right there's uh terms for things that are, uh, you know, that used to not have terms, right? There's medical diagnoses. There's medication for those things. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, th that has a lot to do with it too. Yeah, gotcha. Good point. It's, it is it is crazy. Technology helps, but but there's such a downside. Yeah, it is. I don't know. So, all right. So I think we have a connection. I'm, nope, nope. Okay. All right. So we are going to reach out to Shadow Flag. Okay. The, uh, this is a UK black metal band. That's awesome. And yeah, and they're. They're cool. They're really cool. And they call themselves poetic black metal. Right. And I, I just say that they provoke the bear and they they poke the black metal bear. Wow. They, they're a little different. They're yeah. a little, you know, not That's afraid first, to be fully like, honest. Yeah. And, I've never heard of a poetic black metal band before. So this is going to be awesome. That's right. And, you know, that's what I think. All right. So, hey, we're going to hope we have JJ here from Shadow Flag. Hey, guys. Hey. Hey. How's it going? <laughs> Good. Can you hear us JJ, all right? This is Tops. Yes, good. Hey, man. We appreciate you guys both being here. And uh, the band is Shadow Flag. The new album is The Delusion Machine. Oh, nice. Yes. That's a good name. Awesome. And uh, just congratulations on that new release. And I've been listening to a lot of it and and just just love it, man. I mean, it's it's kind of it's dark but positive and and we were just saying poetic black metal. I, I don't know. I just I see that as just kind of the new wave or a new future. But it's UK black metal right now, which is the most, I think, most powerful wave in black metal. Mm -hmm. And that is bands yeah. from the UK that are just taking it and doing different things with it. And sometimes you're twisting it up like a pretzel, but I love it. So <laughs> we're glad you That's guys are here. That's what us Brits do. We, we take music. We twist it around, put something different on it. But the UK scene is really strong. It's real strong it's right really now. And, and you know, every every genre of music I love originated in your country. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It's not a bad place. <laughs> no, of course not. So, <laughs> so the delusion machine. So we're going to er encourage all of our viewers and listeners, man, to reach out and find that release. So do, do you want yeah. them to go to Bandcamp? Do you want them to go to your Facebook page? What do you guys prefer? Um, well, I think uh, if they can discover us through Bandcamp, they can they can stream it so they can hear it. Um, and then if they like what they hear, then they can hopefully put their hands in their pockets and buy it as well. Yes, absolutely. We encourage on this show people to have something physical in their hands, order a CD mm -hmm. or a T-shirt, go yeah. to the show and yeah. buy something physical to support a Definitely. band you like. Yes. We currently have a 48 hour flash sale on. Oh. On 
It's everything. 48 hours, you've got probably what? I don't know. 47 hours? 47 <laughs> hours. <laughs> you've got an amount of hours, but buy something cheap right now. Okay. Uh, so that includes T-shirts and discs? Yeah, yeah. And maybe some vinyl? Uh, big Cartel page, uh, shadowflag.bigcartel.com. All right. It's all on that. Yeah. It's all, it's, it's on, all on your Facebook right now. Yeah, it's all it is, on our Facebook, yeah. 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 yeah, very good. All right. And, JJ, we were talking earlier about, um, was it Mourn Defeat? Do I have the title right? That's right, yeah, Mourn Defeat. Mourn Defeat, which is this this – sideline song that you've done that is not on an album but it is on no. band, that it is it is on bandcamp it is on bandcamp on its own special page for um we released it in aid of a charity called mind which is a uk based mental health charity um we released it in uh january so it's a song that we uh cops here wrote um quite a while back and we've yeah. always played it in the rehearsal room we've written a lot of we wrote lyrics to it and we used to enjoy playing it but it wasn't right for the last album um but we wanted to do something with it hence uh how it came out but it is certainly um the themes of the song and the the ethos behind the writing of it was certainly uh fueled by uh, mental health um awareness etc well carps uh hails and shout out to you for that mm -hmm. absolutely I, oh thank you i think the title mourn defeat has many meanings help me understand mm. your writing of this song and the actual title please okay well mourn defeat really it talks about the point when experiencing depression where you have to accept that you are sliding down and you mourn that defeat of going into that state, knowing that what it's going to be and what you're going to go through. And it talks as well about the stigma that surrounds mental health and that affects you as a person who experiences mental health as well, because stigma sticks deep. So it's, it's mourning that defeat, mourning that, that fall into what you know is going to be a living hell for a time, but eventually you're going to come back out of it. There you go. And, you know, our, our theme on this show today is that there is darkness, but then light. Because yes. tomorrow, here in America, we're experiencing a full solar eclipse. And, awesome. and really, that is darkness followed by light. And, exactly. and yes, and, and indeed, so I, I do appreciate you writing an honest song. And this is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. This is UK right. black metal. Yep. Touching yeah. on raw nerves and touching on real issues. That, you know, rather than singing about uh, some, you know, some uh, mythological creature or something, they're, they're, talking, yeah, yeah. they're writing yeah, lyrics like the kinks do, and that is down to earth. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you have to talk about real issues. You have to talk about, you can't talk about witchcraft and all this kind of stuff. It becomes comical after a while. It does. You, yeah. you need to do on, on issues that mean something to somebody. Mm hmm Yes, that that are powerful. You're you're actually. I I hope you're. You know that message is getting out, and that you're saving a life here or there, or or at least yeah. helping some people get on a better path. Uh, yeah, exactly. I, I, I so it, it yeah. helps. It, has, it helps that it has a seriously good riff to it as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it never hurts. It never hurts. <laughs> we we have two co-hosts in the studio with us here who work for. Uh, kind of like Dallas, Texas's version of Mind, a charitable oh, organization. Oh. Uh, they're volunteers. Uh, everyone there is a volunteer uh, that awesome. that that help address uh, suicide prevention among okay. artists mm -hmm. in specific. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's really that's really cool. So speak up, speak okay. up, guys. If if anything, you know, if you want to pop in a question, but sure. look, I I you know I do appreciate it very much. But the other thing we touched on here is that metal itself sometimes leads to a great mosh pit and that right. in and of itself is therapeutic yep. <laughs> so, exactly yeah it's a bonding moment <laughs> we, it, totally agree and we we have such a strong scene here in the uk um we went to uh, as our little um kind of holiday we went to bloodstock festival last weekend yes um here in the uk which was headlined by a monomath yeah uh, ghost and Megadeth, yes, yeah. um, which was a great, great show. And it, again, it's such a strong scene here. And you see people who, as you were just saying, 
who get their therapy through that mm. kind of experience. And it is so positive and so healthy yeah. and such a joy to be a part of that even worldwide, you feel um, you feel proud and connected to be part of this, this great thing that metal has always stood for yeah. forever. I've never I seen... Think as a, as a musician, you can also share that catharsis as well, because sometimes you, you're playing and you're working through stuff as you're playing it. You know? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In that moment. So it's, it's a conduit that everyone benefits from. Yeah. yeah. And, and we don't mind if you uh, set down the bass guitar and just jump out in the pit with us, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. If, if you need a little extra <laughs> dose of therapy. Yeah. Take a leave. Hey, Carps, uh, look, man, I wasn't sure you would be joining us today. I wasn't 100% sure. So our titling at the bottom just says JJ Flames. Uh, it's okay. I'm a man of mystery. I, yeah. I, I, I can never never he's, that's the way he wants it. Be, no, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> We're not sure if he exists. So, But look, you got to feel proud of the delusion machine, right? Very proud. Definitely, very yeah. proud. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, and, and I love the fact you picked up. There's a there's a positive message within all the darkness. Mm -hmm. That's great that you picked that up because there is. It's, it's knowing that there's an existence that we're going to tread along. There's a nothingness within it, but still you exist in that time you have. Yeah, you right. strive, you, you you push on. Yeah, yeah. And I think the greatest thing is about the delusion machine. It was it was written about now. It was written about the world, which for many many reasons. Um, is fairly deluded. Um, it's about the kind of the nothingness in the middle of all that. What is the point of it all? Um, and I'm sure where you're sat, um, you're in a country which potentially has had quite a few ups and downs recently. Yeah, it's not uh, been a good year. Yeah. No, not no. at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it's, it's all good. It's very real. Right. Yes, indeed. And we appreciate you guys touching on that nerve. It really do. So, all right. So, Bloods, uh, is it, no, wait, no, Blackwoods, Blackwoods, right, is the yeah, other one yes. I noticed. Is that like the, around the time of uh, fall or Halloween coming up? October, yeah. October, the, October. we're playing October 6th, I think. 6th? 6th or 7th, yeah. Something like that. The beginning of October, yeah. So, it's, it's, it's before Halloween, but it's, it's, um, so Blackwood Festival, or the Blackwood Gathering, as it's called, Gathering. takes place um, in the Lake District. I don't know if you've been to the UK, yes. uh, but the Lake District is um, vast and desolate a vast and desolate place, <laughs> and they meet uh, in a kind of crazy... Um, it's, a, it's a wood or it, fell. Basically, yeah, it's basically oh. in the middle of a wood, yeah. and they set up a stage, yeah. and That's so cool. um, it's, it's, it's That's kind cool. of... Going back to nature, and it's just a—it's going to be a brilliant festival. Headlined by Winter Phillip. Yeah, Winter Phillip, another UK black metal, uh, you know, provoker. I love it, yeah. man. Yes, what a band they they're are. Kind too. of our biggest black metal export they at the are, moment. Winter yeah. Phillip. They're just their the latest, latest album is stunning. Yeah, very, yeah, very gr good. great band. But we don't, we we love you guys too, and I know that you kind of identify yourselves as a little bit more underground, and that's totally cool. But that's what we support on this show, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, just very very thrilled to have shadow flag on this on on this show i really am so no all right no, we're honored to be asked so we love it yeah and you're representative by uh imperative pr we love those guys <clears throat> yeah and yeah, in fact good guys. great bunch of guys yeah done a lot this, for us um this, we that yeah no they really have we we just came back from we played a, the biggest festival metal festival in ukraine yeah. about two weeks ago yeah that was an experience that was, that was awesome very good really, really cool yeah now at these festivals is there still a barricade between the audience and the stage yeah there was yeah yeah, yeah that's, we, we that's like, kind of a bummer we like it when there's not that yeah, yeah. yeah. Playing, playing nose to nose with somebody over your effects board is, is <laughs> really fun. yeah <laughs> we want to be able to climb on stage we want to pause. Yeah, yeah. I like musicians sweat on me. Like that's my thing. Yeah. I want to be right up there underneath yeah. it. Like please spit on me. We want to like, feel the sweat. We want to feel it all. That's yeah, great. It's I mean, the I best way to experience I music. You want to be able to smell them. Yes. Yeah. Well, nice. sometimes. <laughs> there is one American <laughs> metal band that smells real bad. Now they can they can kind of stay back, but. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Mastodon, right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, if you say so, man. But I don't know. I like Brit I like British metal at the moment, so we're gonna make fun of those American bands. Yeah. So. Yeah. Take the piss out of them. 
You know, and and it's sort of like, you know, you read all those stories about the early days of punk when all the fans were spitting at the band and yeah. vice versa. And and then I remember seeing this interview and one of the guys, I forget which band, he said there was a big gob right on the on the guitar, <laughs> on the court, right where right on the neck of the guitar where he knew he had to play in a second, you know, yeah. and uh, it was just. <laughs> but you know what? Let's share some bodily fluids. Right. Come on. Yeah, I know. We're in this together. <laughs> <laughs> you ever heard of the Mac lads? Yeah. Have you ever heard of the Mac lads? Yeah, the Mac lads, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they played with a lot of golf all over the place. <laughs> and I saw them live. It was hideous. <laughs> so, are you saying that Gob is coming back a little bit? Gob is back. I don't. I don't know. If Gob's never back, is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> Gob is like what? Well, it's a British phrase for saliva. Yeah, but I mean, oh, you know that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, is Gob on the band? Is Gob from a band, or or being spit at the band? Is it coming back yeah. in Britain? Is it is it coming uh, back? Like, thankfully, not where we play. No, we certainly don't <laughs> spit on people. Not intentionally. No, that's that barricade. Yeah, that's, that's oh, okay. that's keeping that bay. Yeah. Nah, the barricade is there because of all those stupid cameras that have to have those I little railroad cameras. Yeah. I once kicked a balloon in somebody's face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where was that? <laughs> yeah, the oh. It wasn't good. No. <laughs> so we celebrate anyway. we celebrate black metal here, but we find the dark humor in it. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah. and and you know, and that's that's something that you guys do and I think a lot of British bands do is is you know, find yeah. find the, well, find well, the, the Yeah. <laughs> You carry on. No, you the one thing I was going to say is that people often uh, talk to us after shows, and because we portray quite, uh, you know, as all a lot of black metal bands do, a fairly serious presence on stage, they're quite surprised that we're kind of fun and easy going in the bar. Yeah, which is really cool because we think that whilst you can you, you can create um, an artistic statement and attempt to uh, portray that to your audience. You, it's good to be able to step out of that and become a real person yeah. and actually be funny because life is about being funny. Really, there you go. Yeah. That's, what, humor. We were, that's yeah. what we've been saying. Yeah. Yes, very good. Well well said. Yeah. And, you know, I, I agree, man. Your imagery is kind of dark and menacing, mm -hmm. but uh, I know you guys are friendly, and I would definitely yeah, buy the next yeah. round in the pub well, with you guys. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> It's not friendly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat you up. <laughs> you bite my finger if I put a finger <laughs> <laughs> But, look, Carps, I appreciate you writing uh, Born Defeat. And, JJ, you're forever my hero for posting that message about it, my friend, because, God, That's awesome. you know, the, we, we have lost too many musician friends right here in our town to yeah. suicide. Yeah. And, and, Very and, recently. Yes, yeah. and and, yes. and 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 we all know the you know the more international cases, but we've just got to talk about it and and yeah. and, and tell people to reach out for help is yeah. nothing yeah. nothing to hesitate. No, no cool. nobody's Friends. alone. Nobody's alone. Yeah. There's sure. always somebody there. Good mm -hmm. point. Good point. You know. Yeah. All right. Well, man, I wish we could talk all night. It's uh, the name of the album is The Delusion Machine. That's their new release from Shadow Flag, rising UK metal stalwarts warriors and provokers and poets very cool these guys yes. these guys these guys live black metal we appreciate you guys so much and and i know it's real late over there appreciate you staying up for us so if i was there i'd certainly certainly buy the next round we love you guys and appreciate it <laughs> thanks guys <laughs> <laughs> cheers cheers we'll talk to you soon cheers. thank yeah. you much thank you thank you very much good to see you yes thank you they're called the Shadow Flag. Yeah, great guys. Shadow Flag. Shadow Flag. That's very cool. Yes. And it's nice to see fun. different genres of music, you know, whether it's punk or black metal or whatever it is, to really come out. And we're all about the same, you know, mission. Let's break stigma. Everybody yeah. goes through this. That's right. So, very cool. I, I hope that someone watching uh, counts a number of, of times we, we say the word shadow. Yep. Darkness. Eclipse. Maybe we should give them a prize if they have the right number. So. <laughs> I don't know. I'm surprised. I have a contest going. Yeah, yeah. we're contest. <laughs> They're watching on YouTube real slow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it I back. gotta give a shout out to my favorite British metal magazine. It's called Zero Tolerance. That's awesome. Yeah. 
This is uh, this is a great magazine. So I went to the bookstore to look for their newest edition. And it's not quite in the oh, it hasn't on come the out shelves, yet. on the shelves yet. But I did I did finally subscribe to it. Very cool. Those British metal magazines have a free CD. Oh, with each one? Yeah. Oh, that's wow. cool. I, why don't we do that here? Reason number 700 <laughs> why British magazines are better than American. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so I feel so bad we could talk to Death Valley Girls. Oh, that's all right. Death Valley Girls. Death Valley hey. Girls. Are you there? Call us. We all needed to have our fangirl moment, I, I think, know. you know? Yeah, we want to have our fangirl Come on, moment. we want to talk to you. <laughs> These are punks who are on stage doing it. Yeah. We're all about it. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, Death Valley Girls. Yes. The Death Valley Girls. And well, they, I, I don't know how long they've been around. I mean, are they kind of a, like an up and coming? I think so. Yeah, yeah because I, I think last year when I saw them, they were just kind of starting to tour. Cool. They were about to hit their tour. So, uh, for great, them. a great crop of, uh, 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 you know, punk bands coming out of Los Angeles at the moment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of which they're, I think, a leader of the pack. But there's a lot of them. And, and even some of the like old them. school, you know, your L7 and um, some of the older bands are starting to tour yeah. again, too. L7's back. Yeah. yeah. I'm they so got a documentary up. I know. I know. All right. Guess what? Yeah. We're going to show a little cool little video awesome. about the eclipse right now. Oh, cool. And then we'll come back and talk to our science correspondent. Very nice. Heck yeah. This summer, a total solar eclipse will cross the United States from coast to coast for the first time in a century. Thousands of people are flocking to the path of totality, the area where it will be possible to see the moon entirely cover up the sun. There will be music festivals and huge crowds. A Kentucky town even rebranded itself as Eclipseville. But what can eclipses actually teach us about our place in the solar system? People have tracked eclipses since the dawn of civilization. Many cultures thought they were bad omens and developed all kinds of myths to explain them. In ancient China, people believed a solar eclipse occurred when a sky dragon devoured the sun, and their word for eclipse came from the word to eat. In West Africa, some people believed eclipses happened when the sun and moon were fighting and viewed the event as a time to resolve old feuds. By the early Renaissance, astronomers began to investigate the science behind eclipses. Nicholas Copernicus saw four solar eclipses in his lifetime. His observations through a camera obscura helped him develop the theory that the sun was at the center of the solar system, not the Earth. In the 19th century, new large telescopes led to the discovery of Uranus and Neptune, and astronomy itself became more popular. The growth of railroads made it easier for people to travel to experience eclipses. During an eclipse in 1868, French astronomer Pierre Janssen used a newly designed instrument called a spectroscope to observe the sun's wispy atmosphere called the corona, which is only visible during a solar eclipse. Through the spectroscope, he saw light divided into each color of the rainbow, but he also saw a bright yellow line in the corona spectrum that couldn't be explained. Astronomers later identified it as a new element and named it helium after helios, the Greek word for sun. Now we know that it's the second most common substance in the universe. An eclipse even helped prove Einstein's theory of relativity, which held that gravity could warp space and time. In the year 1919, British astronomer Sir Arthur Eddington used a total eclipse to observe a star cluster behind the sun called Hyades. He saw that the light coming off the stars was warped by the gravitational pull of the sun, just as Einstein had predicted. Like Sir Eddington before them, scientists today are planning dozens of experiments that can only be done during a total solar eclipse. The few minutes under the moon's shadow gives NASA the chance to study the sun's corona and its magnetic field. One team will send hundreds of helium balloons into the sky to study how Earth's atmosphere responds to the dramatic drop in light. But for the casual stargazer, like their ancient counterparts, the eclipse is a chance to experience firsthand a piece of the cosmos. And if you can't make it to Eclipseville, Kentucky this time, don't worry, there's always 2024. This is You Are Here, a series by The Atlantic about the science behind everyday life. Let us know what topics you want us to explore in the comments. I'm Leia Varjak, thanks for watching. That's our YouTube right there, the Corsman Show. Awesome. Go to our channel and subscribe. We need a few more subscribers. All right. Yeah, that's your duty. Please subscribe. Subscribe. Do yeah, it. We're not asking for money. No. Just please hit subscribe. Click a button. Just hit that's that all you have button. to do. Click it's not button. hard. Hit that button and come fill some balloons up this week. Exactly. Feel good about yourself. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> so. I'll make some jokes. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> we want to talk to Dr. Alexa. 
Halford, who is our own science correspondent. How cool. Did you know we have a science correspondent? I did not know that. We have <laughs> a <laughs> science correspondent. That is so awesome. And she's a NASA scientist from Dartmouth. But she does. She's she's just a badass. Wow. I'm yeah. excited. Hello. <clears throat> Hi. How are you? Hi, Alexa. Hello. Hello. So, yes, I've been bragging that we have a science correspondent. Because <laughs> <laughs> yes. you said I could say that. Sure. Sure. <laughs> well, welcome back. We're glad you're here. And, uh, okay, so a question just came up, and that is, because we've been talking about emotionally and, and, and kind of um, cerebral issues here, and that, and that is, uh, the does it change your mood when all of a sudden something is out of ordinary and darkness envelops you in the middle of the day? So a lot of people have had, you know, a range of experiences uh, with the eclipse. And there's a bunch of articles online that are really kind of interesting to read. So some people have apparently broken down like in tears. They've fallen on their knees and it's quite an experience uh, for them. Others have had maybe not quite that extreme of an experience, but yeah, I think it's, you know, to each them all. My partner, for instance, doesn't respond to music, but I do, uh, you know, so I can listen to a piece of music for the first time and end up crying or laughing and he doesn't understand that. So I think it's probably a very similar kind of thing where for some people, yeah, it's probably quite an experience and for others, yeah, the sky just got dark. Right? <laughs> I got you. Okay. Well, I don't know. If if they let me run the country, I would declare those two minutes of total darkness to be a coming together of our country. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, that absolutely. we should hug the person you're next to or at least tell them, you know, that you're they're appreciated. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just uh, this is an opportunity right now, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. right. I, I, I agree. But then you could say that about pretty much any science uh, thing. You're right. I, probably agree. You're right. Uh, I mean, I think this is this is one of those times when, you know, this, it, it's open to the public, right? It doesn't matter who you are. As long as you're in North America, you can go out and see at least a partial eclipse, which is is quite cool. And so, you know, it doesn't matter, um, you know. Uh, anything about you, you can go out and enjoy it. You're right. Um, as long as your boss, I guess, lets you out or you yeah. have a window that you can see it from. <laughs> but we are streaming, for those who are stuck inside, we are streaming it um, from coast to coast. It's about four hours starting at 12 p.m. Eastern time, I believe. Um, they're going to start a live feed and kind of go across the country to different events uh, in different, you know, different cities, different national parks, and and see what the Eclipse is doing. So that should be quite interesting. If you can't make it um, and you want to see it, we'll have a live stream of feed of it. A live stream. And they're going to yes. make it yeah, available afterwards as well. Nice. Yes. And, and let's be clear, this is from the Redwood Forest of Oregon all the way to the shores of South Carolina. What a cool thing that we've got happening in America. I just mm -hmm. think it's an awesome day, and it's going to be a crazy, just wonderful experience mm -hmm. for all of us. It should be quite exciting. I mean, like this is this hasn't happened for a century. We've had totality in the U.S. Uh, I think the last time was in 1979 before I was born, uh, but we haven't had it cross the entirety of the U.S. Mm -hmm. since like 1918. So it's yeah. been just about a hundred years. Wow. Yes. So yeah. so this is a busy time for you, and I, I was bragging also that you're you've got a question Q and A tomorrow with Washington Post. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And you've done a lot with Reddit today and also tomorrow. So mm -hmm. people can reach out to you. Do you want them to go to your Twitter or or just or do yeah. they go to Reddit and, and type in your name for, for the Q&A? So I think uh, the Reddit, I believe, is going to be under the Washington Post handle. Okay. So I believe it's – I can look it up here quick. Uh, all the information, I believe, is on my Twitter page. And after we're done here, I can retweet that again so people can can see it. Yeah. Um, but it's it's, I believe – uh, yeah, the Washington Post handle, and um, let's see, where did it go? And they have, um, there's all the information, of course, they had us do one of those Ask Me Anything little yeah. pictures with with everything written on it. 
And I wrote that on what, like Thursday. So of course it's out of my brain. Here you go. (laughs) (laughs) User is Washington Post on r slash science. And so hopefully I'm sure they'll be, they'll be advertising it and I'll try to advertise it a bit more too. Yeah. Cool. Cool. And and so, and then, then I saw this other picture of this jet pilot and they're going to try and stay in the path. To me, that's just fascinating. Yeah. You know, and try and stay in that path for as long as possible. But Dr. Alexa was telling me that my thinking is wrong and really, you can't go that fast. No, but apparently the Concord used to be able to. Yeah. And so there was a guy who actually did hire out the Concord for a past solar eclipse <laughs> oh and goodness. did follow. But <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have that anymore. Oh. Yeah. That was in, in Europe, I believe. And yeah. 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 And, and right. There's no more Concord. Oh, yeah. man. I know. <laughs> so, so sad. What a bummer. <laughs> so what, what are you hoping now? I, you know, we kind of touched on this before. So you, I know you study the effect of heat on the atmosphere and so many other things. And, and you know, and, and we touched on this previously too, that, hey, science, this eclipse and everything out there in space affects us all the time mm-hmm. if we use technology, if we use a cell phone and, 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 and such. And so it is important yeah. that we understand oh, yeah. fully. And and so does this help us get a handle on traveling to Mars in the future, the effect of uh, sometimes sun flares and how to mitigate that or other things? You're the scientist. I'm sorry. I don't want to put words yeah. in your mouth. But <laughs> No, no. This is – I'm actually not allowed to read or watch The Martian because I complain about it every time somebody brings it up. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so currently, um, yeah, our understanding and, well, our ability to predict when we're going to have one of these big solar flares – that can cause a huge amount of material to launch off the solar surface. Um, You know, we're getting better about it every day uh, and our predictions are getting better and better. In fact, this is, this is quite cool because we're, the sun has a, uh, an 11 year solar cycle um, that you might've heard of. And we're currently coming down off of the solar maximum. So the time when it was really active and this maximum actually was quite a small one compared to like 1991 solar max. Um, You know, when I I know it's not heavy metal, but when I used to base was kind of ruling king, uh, you know, on the airwaves, that was the last time we had a massive solar maximum. Um, So we're going into solar minimum and we don't expect the sun to actually be that active, but just this last week, uh, a big sunspot came onto the surface of the sun It rotated into our field of view and it's actually launched a couple of smaller uh, CMEs, but that's good because it means that it still has a lot of energy held up in this big black spot on the sun um, and could potentially be launching more tomorrow. And in fact, a second spot has just started coming around. And so we're going to have another one there. From our correspondent. (laughs) Okay. So yeah, yeah, this is really quite cool. So those who are in totality and can see the Corona, they're not, if, if if a big CME does erupt, you're not likely to see much change while you're looking at it for two minutes because that that distance that it has to travel is still quite large okay. that it's it's unlikely to have anything noticeable in two minutes but since we're taking movies of the corona for the full 90 minutes that's going to take to cross the u.s yes. uh when we put that movie together okay. then you should be able to see the dynamics and that should be really kind of cool wow. um, but it's those events that can cause these really highly energetic particles um that if you had astronauts out in space outside of the outside of the magnetic field of the earth could easily be um, fried or, you know, have yeah. lots of damage done, not just to them, but to the spacecraft itself, which would not be good. So, yeah. so in other words, and, and you're talking about potentially Mars, right? Yeah. Okay. Or even the moon. I mean, they okay. almost had this problem with the moon. Um, and I can't remember which, I think it was between Apollo's, it was either 16 and 17 or 17 and 18 or something like that. There was a big solar uh, storm that came off and, and would have caused a lot of problems. But thankfully, we didn't have any astronauts up at that time. Gotcha. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it, it is so fascinating, isn't it? My mind's you know, blown. I, I mean, Tomorrow is going to be just epic. It is. It is. I wish I could take pictures or something. I, I, unfortunately, my... I won't be able to do that, <laughs> but yeah. you know, I, I'm sure I took people the day will. off work. So <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. Well, and in and our neck of the woods, Alexa is Deep Elm, Dallas, Texas. So I'm mm-hmm. told uh, from Jessica at Deep Elm Foundation that that Stir is having a watching party yes. on their rooftop. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Very that cool. should be amazing. 
Yes. Hey, and and actually, we want to bring up just real quick, touch on safety. I did have this website that touched on the solar viewers and checking them off of this list to make sure mm -hmm. they're actually NASA certified. Um, yeah. so, so I don't think we certify them, but we, we oh. have a list there of trusted vendors as well as okay. a link to the AAAS uh, website or is it AAA or AAAS website um, that has uh, there we all go. of all oh, of wow. them. Yeah. AAAS. Yeah, added so, an extra A in there. So what <laughs> we that's okay. So we popped up on our screen the reputable vendors of solar mm -hmm. filters and viewers, and make sure that the ones you have are on this list. Yeah, uh, we don't and, want any stories Tuesday morning that no. uh, anyone is 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 suffering from loss of vision. We don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, even after the eclipse went through the UK uh, a couple of decades ago or so, there were a lot of reports of people who didn't use proper eyewear and did have problems. So, I mean, this is something to be serious about. It's not just us. I know sometimes it might seem like we go on and on about safety, but there, there's a reason for it. Right. You know, we want everyone to not just be able to see the eclipse, but then see another eclipse next time it's there back There you in go. US. Exactly. Yeah, in 2024, the next one in America. All right. So Yeah. So, and okay. it should be going through Texas, too. So you guys are going to be in a great spot for That's that so one. awesome. Ooh, yes. We, we're going to invite you over yeah. <laughs> yeah. in seven yeah. years. Yeah. So come into our studio. <laughs> I'll be there. So come into our studio yeah. here, and we're gonna have a we're gonna have a live show. Hey, that would um, be awesome. So if you have a bad pair of solar viewers, it is not acceptable to just layer that twice with another bad pair, is it? No, and the reason why it might seem like it's getting darker, and so you might think that more of the the light is getting shielded out. And sure, some wavelengths are probably being more shield, shielded than others. Uh, but the problem is, is you're not sure if it's all the wavelengths that the eye is, is uh, affected by. Mm -hmm. And so it might just be that you're letting in a lot of non-visible light waves in that could still damage your eye. So you want to make sure that you're, you've got the proper filters. And to be clear, in Texas, mm -hmm. since we're, we're not uh, in the 100% path of totality right right yeah uh, even during that peak we cannot take off our viewers now keep right. them on right yeah okay yeah okay. but Nobody's you should still blind. be able to see something kind of cool and oh, yeah. definitely if you don't have the glasses don't worry you can make pinhole projectors so all you need is a sheet of paper and just poke a hole in it and then have that shine onto like even the concrete or another piece of paper. And if you don't have paper with you, you can just use your hands. Okay. So if you just go like this. Um, another fun thing that people have been doing is using uh, pasta colanders oh. uh, <laughs> because they have a whole bunch of little holes. That's a cool <laughs> idea. What a cool so. idea. Yeah. Uh, or I saw somebody suggesting a Ritz cracker. Um, I'm not <laughs> sure that the holes will be clean, but sure, try it. You know, you might not be a full. watch the shadow on the ground or on the other sheet of paper yeah yeah on the okay. ground on another sheet of paper even trees will do this and so a lot of people have posted pictures on past eclipses of looking at the shadow of a tree and you can see all these little kind of eclipses so you see like a circle that's being covered up uh, partially and so you get all these crescents right and that changes as the moon uh goes over the sun yeah okay so, cool. so i have a really silly question are, uh, alexia are you okay with it yeah, uh, I think so. uh, you've probably been asked a lot <laughs> we'll of silly. All right, yeah. All right, and it has to do with cannonballs. Okay. Okay. So if we fire a cannonball into a cloud, does it cause it to rain? And and so if the clouds are in the way, can we do something? <laughs> to, to... I don't think the cannonball is going to work. I wish it would, but I don't think it's going to. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how we can get it to rain okay. and get rid of the cloud. But okay. I like the way you're thinking. No. It's just, I don't think it's, we need to, we I can need see to work it on that a little bit more. I can see, definitely see it <laughs> okay. in like no. Alexa, Looney look, Tunes or something. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my homework on this. Now, I think okay. it does work. I think it does. I'm going to, uh, this is not for a topic for right now. I'll get it to you later. Okay. okay? And we talk more about it. But and I, I had no. Uh, part of coming up with this idea or encouraging me to go try to shoot cannonballs at clouds. <laughs> I think it works. And then it causes it to rain. So we want the cloud to go away. And uh, so does the cloud go away after it rains? It does. Okay. Yep. 
In right, fact, so the we cloud want... <laughs> is all made up of the water, right? So I think the, the easier thing to do would be to try to somehow, I have no idea how you do it, get it to be heavier so that it has okay. to rate. You know, that's that's the way nature works, but I don't know how to get that to, to happen without it just naturally happening. Okay. All right. Uh, because I, I'm, I don't want any clouds in our way in Texas here. If we could just be cloud-free in our state. Especially for next Sunday. <laughs> for our water balloon wars. Oh, yeah. That's right. You can shoot cannons. If, or so you got to figure out this idea. Help us out later, okay. you know. Hey, uh, it's right. I mean, but if you're already shooting water you know, cannons or, or water balloon fight, then does it matter if it's raining or not? That's true. I, mean, I guess you don't want lightning. lightning yeah, no bad. storms. Yeah, yeah. But water rain. Good, lightning right. bad. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a natural dovetail to Alexa because uh, she told me that she works with balloons. Oh. The big, huge ones. Nice. Yes. And she told me they're big as a football field. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I didn't even want to talk about football. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's soccer field. There is big as okay. a soccer field. Does that work? Yeah. That's way better. Okay. So a concert uh, stadium. They're as big as a concert. A concert. There you go. Yeah. A metal stadium. Hey. Yeah. So if you're able to next Sunday, would you come to Dallas and enjoy our water balloon fight? <laughs> if it's, you pay for my plane ticket out there, sure. Okay. But <laughs> so so where are you right now? So I know how to book this. <laughs> I'm in Maryland. <laughs> I'm in Maryland, and yeah. so it's it's a ways away. Okay, is that where Dartmouth is? Right? Yeah, Dartmouth. No, no, no. I'm at I'm at Goddard at, right now. My office is actually sitting at Goddard. So okay. I have a contractor. So I'm still assigned to step at Dartmouth, but my office I'm sitting at is in NASA Goddard. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. So there's a lot of excitement, I imagine, and you're asking for help from the public or NASA is on temperature readings and, and such. And and there's yeah. a lot of ways that that you know science, um, uh, 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 you know science amateurs can get involved, right? Oh yeah, and in fact, we need we need amateurs to get involved. I mean, it's hard to even call them amateurs because they're they're doing science with us, right? Mm -hmm. They're yeah. helping us collect our data. There's not that many of us who have as our paid job, you know, being a scientist. Especially not many of us who are paid to be either solar physicists, magnetospheric physicists, or whatever, right? And we need to collect a ton of data. Um, and the more data we have, the better, because we can have you know fewer fewer missing pieces, I guess you could say, of the puzzle. So fewer missing bits along the path of totality. Um, and so we need people to go out and help us get this data. Um, I think people were actually asking for uh, help, not just getting data during the eclipse, but either the day or the day after as well. Cool. So you can see at the same time, right? So if, if the eclipse, like here where I'm at, it's going to be at about 2.42. Um, is is the peak, and so they want people to go out on like either today or, or the day after the eclipse and get readings from 2:42 at that time, and then you can kind of compare what is the temperature normally like at, wow. at a similar kind of day of the year, and how does that change uh, when you have the eclipse, and so that's a nice kind of way to do that, and and that's going to be really cool because we know that in the path of totality. It's going to drop by a couple of degrees, probably, if not a little bit more. Um, and then, how far out does that go from totality? You know, how much of a temperature drop can you actually see? And that is really interesting because it's going to yeah. set up winds uh, in the atmosphere. Because remember, the shadow is actually moving faster than the speed of sound, and so you can get these really strange winds in the atmosphere. And maybe those will move the clouds. I don't know. Gotcha. <laughs> you know. Is all of this being gathered for – well, I, I guess we discussed it, right, to to try and, and predict solar flares, but also for for Mars prep? Uh, I think Mars prep is definitely something that we're interested in learning more about. You know, yeah. especially with the solar corona, we want to be able to predict when the sun is going to have these big, large events and – under, better understand the environment. I mean, if we're going to be traveling out in space, it'd be nice to know what the weather's like out there. Um, but then, like with the with the temperature readings and the cloud pictures that people can take using the Globe app and help us out with that, that's actually to better understand our own environment and our own atmosphere yeah. and weather here. So you know, you can do both. You can help help here on Earth, and yeah. then you can help us to kind of you know go off and and see the rest of the solar system and. Maybe eventually someday, you know, the rest of the universe. Yes. That'd be kind of cool. Yes, indeed. Alexa, we love you. Appreciate you so much. And uh, just appreciate your time. And I'm sorry we got to wrap it up. I wish I we know. could talk for a I long, know. long time. It's so fascinating. But, so we don't have to really say goodbye to her. Follow up with Reddit okay. and, and do her Q&A session, which she's doing tomorrow. Right, yep. right Alexa? 
Yep, tomorrow, yep. 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, so that would be 9 a.m. Central time. Yes. Okay. And we'll be on there at least an hour, um, but we might check it, you know, a little bit longer than that. So, and you've, yeah. all, you've always awesome. got good information on your Twitter, so find Dr. Alexa Halford on Twitter uh, as well. So. Hey, and if um, I'm a science correspondent, you better have me back so we can talk about more science. <laughs> yes, I know. I want to come back and talk to Alexa, the yeah, correspondent. She's our She's correspondent. Awesome. She's yeah. our science correspondent. That's so cool. Our space correspondent, too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Alexa. Oh, thank we you, appreciate Alexa. you. Thanks so much. Yep. See you again. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Right, bye now. Bye. Yes. Course Paint Show science correspondent, that is Dr. So cool. Alexa Halford. It's official. Hey. It yes, is official. Yes, it is. And guess what? Dang it. Our show is drawing to a Man. close. And, you know, we got to give thanks to the uh, comedian from the Backdoor Comedy yeah. Club. I'm hoping that maybe we can show their website. Uh, and that is Ziggy. Yeah, thank you, Ziggy. Engineer. Thank you, Ziggy. Ziggy is the You're engineer. welcome, guys. There, there he is. Very hey, we cool. want to see you, too, if that's possible. Uh, yeah. You oh, can there, there he is. is. Hi. Hey. Uh, you can catch me every Thursday. Heck nice. Check me out. Ooh, Backdoor cool. Comedy Club. Very and cool. And we, we showed the website there, too. Voodoo Magic Designs designed our logo. Little Spark Films does a lot for us. Awesome. They're great. And, and made some uh, some of our promos as well. Uh, but on the show, of course, we had you guys, Foundation 45, and appreciate you so much. Thank you for having for us on here. here. Absolutely. Shadow Flag, Death Valley Girls, we still say hello to you. Yeah. And, and Dr. Alexa, too. So. It's been yeah. an eventful hour yeah. and a half. Tomorrow's going to be right. fun. All week is going to be yeah, fun. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. With balloons. With balloons. With balloons. Get ready. <laughs> yes. In your face sometimes. Yes. <laughs> just go with it. Hopefully they'll burst and not just, not just and bounce off your face. Because <laughs> that will not be fun. <laughs>